Good evening and welcome to the Whiskey Lover Society with me Gert Tief. And tonight we are looking at a couple of some sherry monsters or some sherry bombs. I'm not sure if YouTube is going to like the, the word using a bomb. <laughs> so it might think twice before they approve uh, this video. But of course, um, every now and again, I do like to go back um, to the start of my whiskey journey. And of course, a lot of you uh, already know that I did chase the sh sherry monsters for quite some time. I was also always looking for that deep, dark sherry whiskey. Sometimes um, taking it a little bit too far. Um, sometimes adding my own sherry to it to increase the volume of sherry. So I've been looking quite uh, deeply into the sherry bottles. And um, so I thought it's a good idea just to give a little bit of a year report. Um, what did I find with regards to the sherry monsters? Which ones do I like? Which ones did I keep? Um, I did have a lot of whiskey, so I went through all of my bottles um, last night and I picked uh, five of them. Um, and I'm going to review them just a quick background information. I'm not going to go through the whole review on each one of them, but I'm just going to pick the ones that I really liked and um, maybe in the end give a uh, my best sherry monster or my best sherry bomb for the year of uh, 2022 something that i'm definitely going to go back every time i want to impress somebody with a nice sherry whiskey so i'm um, no particular order i'm going to start off maybe the one that i really enjoyed um, in 2021 and um I had this bottle for quite a long time, didn't open it um, for no reason, so I decided to open it some couple of months ago. And of course we are talking about the Edra Dower, 10 year old. Um, and I must say this was my go-to dram for quite a number of times. This is my, sec <laughs> this is my second bottle already for the year. Um, and you can see this one is um, half done already. I keep on going back to it. Um, I like the bottle. I like the nice uh, pop that it gives you. And the, everything, the nice cork. Never had a problem with a cork breaking off on this one. Um, nice branding that they have on it. I just like the idea of the Edred Hour 10. Of course, we also have a car strength. People keep on telling me, Gert, you need to get the car strength. Well, maybe sometime soon I will also invest in the car strength. But I haven't done it yet. 40%, so definitely not a high ABV one. Um, but I just love the idea of it. In honor of my starter Edward Hour 10, I bought myself a small little dram. Nice, lovely color to it. Nice little bit of a oiliness. It sticks to the glass. I do like that. And of course, it's all about the nose and the taste. Oh my word, that is, that is just absolutely nice. Sweet uh, hint of an alcohol note. You get the big sherry notes coming out. Oloroso sherry. You get the raisins, vanilla, matured in eggs, bourbon, and eggs Oloroso sherry cask. You get a creaminess. You get a light chocolate note. A little bit of a dried apricot and a little bit of a dried pears. And some dried um, apples maybe. So quite a lot of dried fruits in it. A little bit of a dates maybe. And a hint of a cinnamon also coming out. Taste wise, I have to taste it. Hmm. If you taste it, you know that it is sherry. Big sherry, 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 sherry notes. That dark sherry notes. Um, you get this, the, the sweet fruits, the vanillas, the raisins, a little bit of a toffee note, 
you get a little bit of a toffee note in, in a regards of a creamy toffee note. Big Sherry Monster, Big Sherry Bomb. Love it. Loads and loads of sweetness. And then, of course, I'm waiting for that oak to kick in. Ten years, sometimes you get a little bit of an oak, which I'm not a fan of. On this one, just want to make sure. Mm. A little bit of a dark chocolate coming out, but not bitter. Um, just the sweetness of a dark chocolate. Nice oily feel to it. Um, just coat your mouth. Absolutely fantastic one. And then, of course, we go on to the next one. And we are looking at the Glen Allen Key 10 year old car string. Now, this was the batch six. I also have uh, the bottle, well, third bottle. And um, I, I bought this, uh, um, this one not so long ago. Not going to work on the green screen. I'm afraid, but I bought this one um, still unopened, another batch six, and um, I must say, I do tend to like the car strength whiskies a little bit more. Um, after doing 260 videos in one year, um, I tend to gravitate towards the higher ABV stuff, at least 46%. But of course, there is a lot of 40% ABV whiskies that is just fantastic. If you need something that is light, um, most of the time core range from the different distilleries, nothing wrong with a 40% ABV. This one, Glen Allenkey, 10 year old, Speyside um, single malt whiskey, of course. Um, car strength bottled at 58.2% ABV. Um, and of course, um, big sherry monster, this one. And this is a bottle um, from um, the big distiller master, uh, Billy Walker. I think um, everybody in, in the know um, has heard of Billy Walker coming from Glendronich. Glendronich went a little bit on the, to the south side. <laughs> And um, a big elevation for um, uh, Glen Allenkey and of course for Billy Walker, he part owner of, of it. So he's really putting a lot of effort in it. He's adding a lot of um, different types of sherry cars, different ABVs. So he's really creating quite a name for himself. Well, he's had a name in Glen Donnerich, but of course at Glen Allenkey is is definitely starting to ticking all the boxes and giving us the high ABV um, whiskies. Of course you have this, and I'm not going to open this bottle now. Um, I just had the samples not so long ago, so I'm just going to go through all the motions on this one. So for me, a big sherry monster. I did like it. I did like the dried fruit, the, the um, mixed dried fruit. You know, you put, uh, put a handful of dried fruit in your mouth with all the different type of fruits. You get a lovely sweetness in it. You get the ranges in it. You get the plums in it. Um, fantastic. Um, what I also did find is quite a strong on the alcohol. And of course, um, at that high ABV, um, you are in charge of that bottle. You decide how strong you want it. You can add water as much as you want until it's perfect for you. And of course, you can uh, add water. It elevates the sweetness. It um, decreases, for me anyway, a little bit of the oakiness. Um, absolutely fantastic. A little bit of a cocoa powder coming out, a dark chocolate notes coming out. I do love the nose on it. Also get sometimes a little bit of a marzipan on it. Um, the ripe figs, the dates, the vanillas coming out, the cinnamons coming out, a little bit of a toffee note coming out, the caramel, the honey note. Absolutely fantastic. Taste wise, um, a little bit different from, from the other sherry monsters, but um, of course you're going to get that um, sherry influences, you're going to get the cinnamons, you're going to get the dried fruit coming out, um, I get a sweet toffee note coming out with a hint of a bitterness right from the start. And um, of course you can add that water in and that will bring that a little bit, a little bit down. Big um, dried fruit, 
take a handful, um, maybe add some chocolate bits into the uh, into the handful of uh, dried fruit, and then put it in your mouth and let all those um, flavors just mingle. That is something that you get on this one as well. Big Christmas cake in a glass. Love that. A little bit of an orange peel, a little orange peel bitter note of a little bit of an orange peel um, oil. Um, a little bit of a spicy ginger note as well. Big mouth coating oily um, uh, whiskey. And uh, then in the end, you do get that little bit of that tannins also coming in. So for me, absolutely fantastic. The next one. Um, I want to also add to the list, and I think that is something that uh, I was not sure which one to pick. So I had the old um, bottle of Aaron, 18 year old, and um, I did like it. Um, it was a suggestion by a, a one of my um, subscribers that I need to also look at the old bottle of Aaron, 18, and um, and I also had a new bottle. Now, the old bottle for me, when I uh, take a look and I taste it in both, um, the old bottle for me was not really a sherry monster, and I think it was more fresh fruit flavors coming out, a little bit of that apple notes and things like that. Um, so for me, it was did not fall for me into the category of a sherry monster. So I choose the newer bottle. I think that is also... On color-wise, it's much darker than the older uh, Aaron 18. So on this one, um, I did like the... Um, uh, well, they do have quite a lot of oak. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of the huge oakiness in it. But I think after time and after a year on 260 videos, um, you get climatized to the, to the oakiness. And um, I tend to get... Um, not distracted with the higher oak. Um, I get used to that oakiness in some of the whiskies. But when you buy this one, I'm sure you will also pick up on that little oakiness. Um, it's for me. It was a little bit um, in the beginning was a little bit too much. Um, but now I'm getting used to that. So the oakiness is there. There's a nice um, hint of sweetness. Not the sweetest one for me. Um, in the five that I'm going to review. Um, this one, it loves a little bit of time in a glass, so pour it, leave it, come back maybe 15-20 minutes, um, it will improve quite um, considerably. Also, the sherry win, after that initial opening up stages, you'll get a lot of um, the sherry notes coming out, the raisins of course coming out. And um, then also that oak is definitely still there, um, add a little bit of water if it is getting too much for you. So for me, um, taste-wise, I will I definitely enjoyed it. It is something that I will definitely go back to. It wasn't a bad price. I think I paid about 89 or 90 euros for a bottle. So for an 18-year-old Aaron, it's definitely an affordable uh, whiskey. Well, maybe not affordable is a good word, but it is, it is on par with other 18-year-old whiskies. Um, the next one that I want to do, and uh, this is going to be the Strong Boy. I did a review on this one not so long ago. And of course, I'm talking about the Abelauer Abuna Patch 58, bottled at 61.1% ABV. And I'm a little bit biased on this one. Um, I think that a lot of people have watched my review on my uh, one year celebration, and I open up this bottle after uh, after more than about two years um, unopened. So I I open it up and I was not disappointed. So on the nose for the Avalauer Abuna, oh my word, that is just sherry, sherry, sherry. It in in fact I think I also said that in my review on it. It's like taking a bottle of sherry and proofing it up, and you are left with the Abelauer Abuna. Absolutely, this is just a big sherry monster. And you get, when you first pour it, you get that little bit of a, 
I would describe as the damaged, uh, the damaged areas. You get that little um, moldiness. Um, you get that uh, little dusty note coming out. The sweetness of it, like old wood. Mm, and when you give it some time, and it, 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 it just disappears like mist through the sun. And when you are hit with just sherry, 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 raisins, dark apples, toffee apple, cotton candy, dried fruit, loads and loads of dried fruit, a little bit of that chocolate note also coming in now, chocolate covered raisins type of nose coming out. Absolutely fantastic. Taste wise, now I'm going to leave this at the full cast strength. I'm not scared. It just disappears in your mouth. That alcohol is so high, it just evaporates. And then you're left with this intense sweetness, sherry notes, Christmas cake. Um, it, it is just absolutely fantastic. All the notes that you expect in a glass of sherry, you're going to find it in this one. This one, of course, you can drink it the way you want it. Add some water to it. It does take water. Fantastic. When I drink it, um, I tend to add on this one, which is not a lot. I will put in five or six drops of water just to give it a little bit of additional um, sweetness coming out. No oak. Let me just make sure on that. No oak for me. That sherry sweetness is there. And of course, now I also get a hint of a dark chocolate, but not the bitter kind. A sweetened dark chocolate. Oh, absolutely fantastic. I do like this one. Next one on the list, we are looking at the Glentronic. And um, I will also put a link um, with every whiskey that I do. I will put a link on, on for you so that you can, if you want to, go to my full review on that whiskey. To be honest, I was never a big fan of the Glendronich. And the big reason, I started with the 12-year-old. And um, for me, it just didn't do anything for me. So I tried to step back from it. I bought the 18-year-old. Um, and the only reason that I bought it, there was this big hype about being such an older whiskey that's in the 18-year-old. And of course, you started with the 17, uh, 9, uh, 27, 2018, 2019. So um, I got a very good price on the 2019 bottle. So I bought it, I think, for 68 or 69 euros for the bottle. It's still standing unopened. I will definitely open that bottle once I've hit 1,000 subscribers. Maybe one year or two years' time. <laughs> Hopefully not. So please, just a quick reminder. If you watch this for, you must have liked something that I've said, um, enjoyed the content. Please remember to like and subscribe. It helps YouTube also to push my content out and also help me to get to 1000 subscribers. And it also helped me to get to the 4000 watch hours. Still way short on both of them. So on the Glendronich, on the nose for me. Um, also, it is a sherry monster. And I think this is one of the best ones that I actually tasted um, during the course of last year. We'll definitely push this out for 2022. So it is a sherry monster, figs, dates, raisins, cinnamon, vanilla. I also get a hint of a mint on it. That's something that I didn't get on the um, other whiskies. But it's a little bit of a minty when you smell. You get a little bit of a minty cooling effect in the nose. So I do get it. Big S Christmas cake in a glass. Old leather coming out. A little bit of a oiliness uh, in the glass. And also oiliness in the mouth. So for me, um, taste wise, oh that was really nice. It is also high ABV. Um, creamy oiliness, um, mouthfeel on it. You get definitely get the alcohol of it. It does a little bit of a kick you in the mouth, so you can add a little bit of water to this one. You get the raisins, of course, the dried fruits is definitely made, the very sweetness of it, the hint of a toffee note, uh, the dark chocolate note, um, the 
chocolate covered raisins again showing up on this one and then um, a sweet sweet sherry monster for me with a hint of oak a little bit of oak perfect for somebody that does not like oak and then the last one that i want to talk about and this is something that i do not have a bottle anymore um and i have a i had a wee sample of it um, this is something that was also suggested from by many many people the puna haben um 12 year old and um this was bottled at 46.3% ABV, and I do like it. And this is, I think, the second bottle that I bought. The first was the Ederdauer, and um, and after watching some reviews on the Bunnehaben, I was thinking I need to just try it before I buy it, and I bought a sample. And of course, um, I did like it. Um, I think this is also something that will be on the list for my 2022 bottling. So fresh, sweet apples, uh, the dark fruits coming out, some pears. Um, I also get a little hint of an orange peel. And then you get the cherry notes kicking in. You get a little bit of a salted caramel. You get a, a little bit more floral note as well. And then you acclimatize and then bam, you get the hit from that um, cherry dried fruit um, coming out. Um, I was Bunnehaben, I was thinking maybe there's going to be a little bit of a smoke. Of course, there's zero smoke in this one. On the taste, hmm, light sherry. Sometimes it feels for me a little bit light, especially if I compare it to the other whiskies. But you get, for me, that's raisins is more like that um, sweeter sultanas, a little bit of a vanilla note in it. You get a little bit of a uh, dry mouthfeel on it um, it does take water well um, if I add it with some water to it I do get a little bit more of a sweetness coming out a little less of that um, uh, a hint of an oak coming out but I also get a little bit of a citrus note and that was a little bit of a strange one for me something like a tangerine vanilla cinnamon um, it reminds me a little bit of a vanilla uh, cream or maybe a little bit of a vanilla ice cream. It is fantastic. Um, that is one of my go-to, well, more than one of my go-to drams with regards to um, the sherry monsters. Just sometimes you need to go back and, and just give you something nice, sweet as a reward for a tough day. Um, a little bit of a um, butterscotch note as well. Vanilla is definitely there. Uh, over and overall a well-balanced sweet sherry monster so that is my list of six whiskies for 2022 this of course is something that i will always have here on my bar um, that is the go-to whiskies that i love i'm sure there is a lot of people out there that will tell me Gert, you've missed this one you missed that one what about this one um, of course feel free to send me a sample um, I'm willing to try anything. Um, it is a whiskey review ch channel, so anything that is sent to me will be reviewed and um, I will give my honest opinion on it. So I need to make a decision, of course, which is my favorite one, the base one. And um, it was a little bit of a difficult one, but in the end, um, it was the last one that I reviewed, and I'm talking about the Abelauer Abuna, it is fantastic. And the fact that it is such a high ABV whiskey, the fact that you can add water to it, you can drink it the way that you want it. Oh, and the longer you keep it in a glass, the better it gets. The taste without water, with water is absolutely incredible. Intense, shared whiskey. Definitely my winner. So thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Tell me which whiskies that you think is a better sherry monster. And of course, I will try to get um, some samples of that. Uh, maybe get a full bottle of that. And of course, you know me. Like, um, try it before you buy it. Very good policy, of course, for anybody. So thank you very much. See you next time. Cheers.